If you were looking to book a cruise and you read reviews of the cabin like this, this and this, would you still book it? I did. If you imagine somebody taking a cruise, you probably imagine them cruising in a cabin that looks something like this. But I've just disembarked a cruise where 51% of the cabins didn't have a balcony and 39% didn't even have a window. The average inside cabin on a cruise ship is around half that of the average hotel room in the US. And on my last cruise, I booked the cheapest and the smallest cabin on the entire ship. When I booked this cruise, I decided not to pick the specific position of my cabin. It did save me a little bit of money, but it meant that I could be given a cabin anywhere on the ship, and more than likely, I would be given a cabin in a bad location. Usually, the cabins that are assigned by the cruise line are the cabins that nobody else has picked, the leftover cabins. We were sailing on board the Carnival Magic, which is a cruise ship that was built in 2011. Despite the ship not being that old by cruise ship standards, I had heard quite a few things about the cabins being dated and run down. The ship has 1,845 cabins and a full capacity she can hold a little over 4,500 guests. The ship has 14 passenger decks and there's actually more decks below that that are for the crew. I could have been given a cabin anywhere from deck 1 to deck 10 and right at the front of the ship to right at the back. I was hoping for a cabin somewhere in the middle of the ship because I do try and avoid the lifts or the elevators when I cruise. The buffet and the pool were up on deck 10, so if I did have to walk from deck 1 to deck 10, that would get tiring quite quickly. I don't doubt that that is good exercise, but I still wanted a cabin that was in the middle of the ship. The cabin that I was given definitely would have been considered one of the worst locations by a lot of people. It had a couple of features that people really don't like in cabins. Our cabin was assigned to us a couple of months before the cruise and we were given cabin 7421. As soon as I found this out, I headed to the carnival website to have a look at the deck plans and I found our cabin at the back of deck seven. The main kind of inside spaces on the ship were decks four and five, so seven was perfectly in the middle, just as I would have picked if I was picking my own deck. So that was a good start. I then moved on to having a look at what was above and below our cabin. At first, I thought it was a good location because there were cabins all around us, but we realized pretty quickly that we were right above the nightclub and the piano bar. I have had cabins in the past where I've been in a noisy location and it's never really bothered me. So I hope that it will be the same on this cruise. I took a cruise a couple of years ago over Christmas and I had an inside cabin that was right above the atrium. In the atrium, late at night on Christmas Eve, they had a Christmas carol session and as I was laying in bed, I could hear these faint Christmas carols. It was very, very creepy, relaxing, but very, very creepy. When we boarded the ship, our cabins weren't ready, so we waited a little while on the top deck. The announcement said that our cabins would be ready from 1.30 onwards, but the cabins on our deck were ready a little bit earlier, so we did go a bit earlier. Our cruise cards were waiting for us in a little envelope outside the cabin door, and that is not unusual on cruises. I do often get the comments of, what happens if somebody breaks into your room? There's nothing in there. Why are they gonna break in there? If they get there first, they can just see your empty room. One of the worst things about inside cabins is waking up completely in the dark. I usually have this small lamp that I use that simulates the sunrise. It is just a cheap little light. It's one of the best things I own. And usually I remember to bring it on cruises with me. On this cruise, I didn't remember and I was absolutely gutted when I realized. Sometimes it takes not having that thing to realize how much you appreciate it. And I do appreciate that lamp. The cabin that we were staying in was around 185 square feet, which is actually pretty big for an inside Inside cabin. It makes it slightly bigger than the average shipping container which comes in at 150 square feet. It's not uncommon to have an inside cabin that is smaller than a shipping container. Our first impressions of the cabin were that it was very spacious and that there was a lot of storage space. This crazy colourful design is the same across all of the cabin categories. If you book an inside cabin, if you book a balcony cabin, the design is pretty much the same. I have to say the colors in this cabin aren't exactly to my taste, but I would much prefer to have a cabin that looks kind of funky, but it was very, very comfortable than a cabin that I really liked the look of, but was totally impractical. Ideally though, of course, you could have both. The inside cabin that I had on p and Iona is probably my favorite cabin. It was smaller than this one, quite a lot smaller than this one, but I liked the design and it was very, very comfortable. It was very modern too. It's a new cruise ship and I appreciate things like USB sockets by the bed. 
Our luggage didn't arrive until later in the day, but of course I had a quick look around as soon as we got into the room. I opened all of the drawers, had a look at all of the storage, and there was way more hanging space than I would ever need in the cruise ship cabin. Of course, the usual cruise ship stuff, there was a fridge, there was a hairdryer, there was a safe, everything you need. You don't need to bring things like hair dryers on cruises and you don't need to bring any towels or any bedding, anything like that. Everything you need is in this room. Just bring yourself and bring your own clothes. It was easy to see that this cabin wasn't new, but nothing was really broken or falling apart. There were a few things, like a couple of the drawers, you really needed to shove them to get them to close, but it was totally fine, it worked. Your Britishism of the week is the word quite, and I'm sure the word quite has caused a few things to be lost in translation, even in my own YouTube videos. If you ask somebody from the UK how their food is and they say that it's quite good, that means that it's fairly good, it's all right good, it's not amazing, but it's quite good. If you ask somebody from the US the same question and they say that something is quite good, it means that it's very good. So when you're watching my videos and I say that something is quite good or I say that the design of a cabin like this is quite nice, I mean it's all right nice, it's not extra nice. When we unpacked, we put our suitcases at the bottom of the wardrobe here. There was space to put them under the bed, and I do do that on a lot of cruises, but I like to put my dirty clothes straight into my suitcase when I've worn them, and having it in the bottom of the wardrobe just means that I can put things away straight away. One of the biggest complaints I hear about cruise ship cabins is the lack of plug sockets or outlets if you're from the US. I knew that this ship was from 2011, so I wasn't expecting any USBs, and it's good that I wasn't expecting any because there's none in this cabin. We did have one European plug socket though, and two US plug sockets, and that was plenty for what we needed. We didn't need any more than that. I do wish that I'd had my lamp to take up one extra socket, but... Oh well, lesson learnt. The cabin may have felt so spacious because it was quite empty. If you're used to cruising on British cruise lines or cruising on American cruise lines out of the UK, you might be expecting a kettle in the cabin, but there's nothing like that on a carnival cruise. The TV is also mounted up high here, which meant that we had this space pretty much free. It is possible to fit up to four people in a cabin like this, and I have done it in the past. Our cabin here, though, was only able to take two people, and I know that because there weren't any beds that came out of the ceiling. If you're sharing a cabin like this, there's three or four of you, you'll be in bunk beds or a sofa bed, and we definitely didn't have the space for a sofa in this cabin. Sharing a cabin like this with two or three other people is okay, but I'd really only recommend it if you're doing it for a short period of time, or maybe you're cruising with kids. Kids absolutely love of these bunk beds but it's not really the same as an adult. I am taking a cruise next year where I'm staying in one of these bunk beds so just check below that you're subscribed because that's going to be an interesting review. Hopefully it all goes well. Next on my to explore list was the bathroom. It was very, very colorful as I would expect from a cabin like this, but it was clean and it was functional. The shower does have a shower curtain instead of a shower screen, but I have to say out of all of the cruise ship cabin showers I've had, this one was one of the better ones. It was quite big, so the shower curtain didn't really stick to me. The water also didn't go everywhere, which is a common problem in cruise ship cabins, and the shower head was quite high. So I think this bathroom was kind of a case of don't judge a book by its cover. It might not look like the most amazing bathroom, but it was very, very functional. And that's really what you need in a bathroom. The smallest bathroom I've ever had on a cruise ship was on board Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. And the biggest, I think, was probably on board the Sky Princess. I had a bath in this cabin. A bath on a cruise ship is an absolute luxury. It is very rare, but it, it is amazing. If you can do it, do it. One downside of the bathroom was that the water in the sink was always warm and it tasted absolutely horrible. I'm definitely not fussy when it comes to water. On most cruises, I'll drink the tap water and maybe this would have tasted better if it was actually cold, but it was not very nice. The tap water in bathrooms on cruise ships has to be safe to drink because people do drink it. But on this cruise, I had a soda package, which meant that I'd already paid for unlimited soda. So I mostly just drank Pepsi instead of water and that suited me fine. We took this cruise in September and we were very lucky because we were a couple of days ahead of a hurricane. I didn't really feel much movement in my cabin at all, even though we were right at the end of the ship. And to be honest, I think the worst movement I've had on cruise ships before has been to do with the height of the ship, not the location on the ship. I took a cruise last Christmas. We went down to the Canary Islands from the UK and we encountered three storms on that cruise. I had a balcony cabin and it was really high up and the movement
movement in that cabin was so much more than on the lower decks. So on that cruise, we barely spent any time in our cabin, even though it was a balcony, just because it moved so much. And I do get seasick, unfortunately. On this cruise, we did have an issue with our cabin that many people would think was a deal breaker. Because of our cabin's location, we could hear music from around 10 or 11 in the evening until I don't know what time. Music does not stop me sleeping, thankfully, so I have no idea when it ended. We could only really hear the bass, so as I was falling asleep, I'd just be kind of playing the game to myself of, what is that song? I recognise that, but it's so far away and strange. <laughs> For me though, it really didn't bother me. It was more interesting than annoying. For me, it was worth not picking my location and saving the money. I paid $76 per night for this cruise, which I think is a fantastic price. That price included my gratuities because I paid them when I booked the cruise. And that price is based on two sharing. So I shared this cabin with my boyfriend and we both paid $76 per night for this cruise. To find out what happened outside this cabin and to see if Carnival lived up to their fighting party reputation, check out this video next.